Hey everybody, Paul Foster is here, and this is Secondhand Productions' YouTube channel, and today we're doing another short film. Uh, this one's called The Whistle 2, it's a short horror film, and uh, it's kind of getting around that time of year. We're getting closer and closer to my favorite time of year, which is kind of Halloween and Thanksgiving and all that other good stuff. Uh, and if you've been following us on uh, our Facebook page, you'll see that We've got some other videos that are in production that we're working on uh, for the channel. We're really working on trying to up the content, so I hope you guys like that. But when we come back, we'll watch The Whistle too. Right out the gate. What's going on? Like, no credit roll, nothing. No, ping. this is the best YouTube videos anyways. Nobody wants to see an intro. I learned that the hard way. I still throw intros in there, though. You dead people. This guy over here is not looking like he really wants to be here. Look at, look at he's running. He's like, let me get the hell out of here. That's kind of a cool shot. A few days earlier. I like that shot. That's cool. Very colorful. Oh, wow. Check that out. These days I'll figure out how they do that. They say you can have the actor just stand there. And you can... Eh. Oh, such good promise. Something coming out of the cell phone. Okay. Oh. It's like a swarm. Nice. Ah. Hey, look, we finally got a title page. Ooh, I got blocked my eyes. They're watering. Ah! Chapter 2. I really probably should have watched Chapter 1 first. But I'll watch Chapter 2, and it'd be like going back three days earlier to watch Chapter 1, if it exists. Oh, come on, guys. Rough compositing always kind of like hurts the production quality of a film, especially when it's such good cinematography. Ooh, is that anamorphic? Did they use anamorphic lenses? Or did they do that trick with an anamorph with the where you put the little string on the piece of paper? I ever forget how they do that. I gotta look that up. Yeah, so my car broke down. Okay. That's a good shot. I like these uh, graphic pop ups, time lapse. That's nice. What's going on there? Hmm. like sometimes when you color grade something you can degrade it to the point it's either that or the compression's kind of high but the image looks pretty rough is there a better what's the set thing 720 oh well why are we at that let's go to 1080 yeah i can still see kind of like this something to do with the camera what's big wall and just a single missing sign because that's where everybody goes to look to see who's missing okay that last part didn't seem kind of unnecessary to cut back and forth this seems kind of unnecessary <gasps> the grand reveal oh my gosh there's two people that are missing I'm picking on it for fun, but the cinematography is still pretty darn solid. It's nice. What kind of car is that? A 
Okay. Thanks for the ride home, Vanessa. Get home safely. No dialogue. We're left to interpret. Nice uh, slide. Just found a watch. You know, whenever I find a watch, the first thing I want to do is take it apart. What do you do? Cut himself? Yep. Yes. Not the smart. See? Oh, nice. So what's going to happen to him? He has been infected by something. It's coming for you. It's an in odd angle, but interesting. I'm wondering if this is YouTube compression that's kind of caused some of this stuff I'm seeing over here just off you know and over here sometimes that it could be like the compression and sometimes it's like if you overdo a color grade you can degrade the image quality but I'm not sure see if I stare at it just straight on it looks great but as soon as you kind of you kind of get over here and you can start to see the pixelization Yeah, I'm not sure. If you got any thoughts on that, let me know. Because it really does look like it's it's disappointing because it's it's kind of affecting the whole experience. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, they sit on that a little too long. Should have just kind of like. It's going to jump at you. It's going to get you. We're moving really slow. See if it gets me. He's coming for. Oh, claw marks. What the hell? Oh, you missed an opportunity, man. Could have so scared the hell out of everybody. Yeah, hide the closet. He'll never look there. Shh. I know if I go behind this coat, Narnia will be there. Oh, he opened the door. That's nice. Okay, I like that. That's cool. The whistle. It's a velociraptors outside the cabinet. Oh, genius. I love that. That's a great, great... Cinematically, that was cool. Not bad. It's not scary. More good shots. Is he outside or inside the window? Oh, he's out, he's outside. Why would you get the hell? Why would you do that? Drive away. Oh my God. Really? <laughs> okay. This brought to you by BMW. Five out of 10 abductions happen in BMWs every year. Oh, it's a European film. Oh, wait. This is the dude that chickened out and wasn't interested in being there earlier. You know, for a very remote area, there's a lot of traffic. Oh, it says help. Okay. 
That girl is just way too dolled up to be in a cop. Her hair's all like perfectly groomed down. Someone's coming out of the woods. Could it be? Who? Could... Oh, who the hell's that? Oh, is, oh, it's, is that him? He's possessed. Then we have the very fancy splash credit roll, which is a minute long. Look, I, I thought this was pretty good. I loved all the, the cinematics were really nice. Uh, it's very colorful. It's a great shot and everything. There's a couple things that bothered me in this one. If I go back, minor stuff though. Once again, this, this particular film has a similar problem that uh, other films have had where they apply some surface level, level visual effects, but it doesn't look like they've been layered in or composited in. And so they look like they don't belong in the shot or they, they're laying on top of the shot instead of part of it. And it's kind of distracting. Like, I love this shot. This shot's cool. I love this. I thought that was genius. I, I'd love to see how they did that. This is okay right here as it starts but the the thing is as it builds it's it's like it's not really part of the shot if, if that makes any sense it doesn't feel like it's it's kind of blended in right so i mean that's just my opinion um obviously they they did a really good job on the story to a point uh there was no dialogue and so it left me kind of guessing what was going on obviously she gets kind of abducted by this mystical stuff the guy appears. I have no clue. <laughs> Maybe you guys know. I don't know. Um, the whistling, it being called the whistle, seems kind of like weird because he, he only does the whistling at uh, one point. Doesn't whistle to capture her or kill her. Um, so then you come over here and there's... The biggest things I guess I have with this particular one, I, I, the visual effects I can look past. It's all cool. You know, that's fine. Um, the uh, the cinematics were good. The camera work was great. The editing was solid, except for the fact that uh, the the issue with your jump scares just didn't scare anybody. I mean, when I'm anticipating something scaring me, it's the timing of the thing. And, and so while it was entertaining, it wasn't scary at all. And I think the big moment there's a couple spots also where you in in the edit you kind of went back and you you kind of went through too many cuts when he's picking up the piece of paper here um you know this is an interesting shot you know he's looking down on the ground and he's you know you got him up lit he picks up this missing persons he sees the watch um then he sees the, the other missing person up here uh, and you can tell that there's a piece missing. So you can, you're naturally going to assume that's those are together. The part that got me was uh, uh, here in a second. All right, he picks up the watch. That's fine. He stands up. There's no reason for this. Because we're going to go, we're going to show this. And then he stands up. He was already standing up. So it's kind of like you're going back to it for what reason uh, in the edit. And then you're going to see that it's a missing persons thing. And he's going to line it up right here. I don't see the need. This is overkill right here. You know, showing that the page perfectly lines up with the rip. That's kind of overkill. You could see, you can accomplish the same thing by going straight to this back shot. And so it's just, you know, it's just as an editor, that's something that would stand out for me. Um, the other part that I was kind of disappointed in, I guess you'd say, uh, this shot here, I like the fact that there was some shake in it. Um, it is a creative angle. Um, the shake creates the tension, and that's cool. But every time we see whatever this creature is, the whistler, um, it's like in an anticlimactic moment. So it's really not doing anything special. So, yeah. And so in the one time you have, you see him start to stand up. He starts to stand up, and... Let's see, where's that at? Okay, so he's flickering. And right behind him, I mean, here, here's the key. We're sitting on this way too long. 
I mean, you see him start. All you need to do, really, is you should have just shown him start to stand up or move or something. That's enough to creep out the audience. The longer you sit on this, it, it just kind of loses its value. And it doesn't really have the effect, for me at least, that uh, you'd like it to have. The idea is to give him, a, give him a glimpse and then move on. And then you can cut straight to him, you know, moving the flashlight. But then you cut away from the flashlight and you could have so had him do something right there, right at the end. And we just kind of turn back. We cut to, the, to where he's going to turn and run away. We never see anything. So there's nothing to scare me. There's nothing to throw me off. So, for whatever that's worth, I still like the short film. It was pretty cool. It was not scary to me, um, but, uh, you know, the things that that I felt like could have been different in this short film, uh, they could have been handled in the edit, and it would have been fine. Uh, but uh, what do you think? You tell me. You guys, uh, I'll put the link below. You watch the short film. Tell me what you think of the short film. If you think I'm right, you think I'm wrong. Um and if you have any idea, I know the, they did that one camera shot. That would be really cool where, uh, you know, she's standing there and the camera's shifting around her. Or even the one where he shifts from hiding in the in the, uh, the, the armoire or whatever that was, the cabinet, and then it shifts him to the car. I thought those were two really cool scenes. Love to get your opinion on it. So if you haven't done so already, definitely hit that like, subscribe. We've got more content, com content coming. You can follow us on Paul underscore SHP at Twitter. And we're also on Facebook at Secondhand Production Films. Uh, and you can hit me up there as well. But definitely le please like, comment, and, and uh, tell us what you think about this particular short film, The Whistle 2. I should go find The Whistle 1. And maybe that explains what I don't understand about this one. But until then, we will catch you next time. Have fun. <laughs> Go find the whistle one. <laughs>